Blessings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the channel today. Hope you're doing well wherever you may find yourselves this Valentine's Day slash Ash Wednesday. Today's episode is tips for dealing with option paralysis if you're a music collector. However, having said that, some of these tips may apply to you if you have other hobbies like you like to read and you collect books and that sort of thing, but we'll get there. Um, my previous video was sort of music and philosophy because I dealt with the philosophy of taste, but that led into the, the more um, pressing concern, which was, is there a ton of great music out there? Today's more of a music and psychology episode, if you will. So that's what we're dealing with today. And I was inspired to do this video mainly for two reasons. One is because option paralysis is something I struggle with almost on a daily basis when it comes to listening to music. And also, many moons ago, perhaps close to a year or eight, seven months, um, I was watching Melinda Murphy's YouTube channel, simply called Melinda Murphy, and she's a big audiophile and she's got a wonderful channel. She talks and presents her um, purchases and she talks about the album she loves and what she's currently listening to, that, that, that whole spiel, right? And like I said, she's wonderful. And in one of those videos, one or two of them, she was talking about one of them, she was upset because a friend of her husband's or a friend of a friend or that sort of thing um, had asked her the insensitive question, when are you gonna put a stop to this? And she was very hurt and, and upset by that. And and rightfully so, because why, why does one have to stop their hobby if that's what makes them happy kind of thing, right? And so, and then she, and then she talked about how the more that she buys, the more difficult it is to select things to listen to. And I said, well, I can relate to that. So I, I posted in the comments um, that collecting is both a, a curse and a blessing. And she responded to that. She gave me a thumbs up and she really seemed to like that. She, she the, the, the pointing out that it was also a blessing seemed to lift her spirits and she appreciated that. And I'm not here to tell you that, to pat myself on the back. Um, but that if you're dealing with that problem, well, that you have to think of it as not just as a curse, but as a blessing. And so it's 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 conflicting and you're torn, right? But it is a blessing as well. You have to look at that to accentuate the positive kind of thing, as tough as it may be at times. Um, so in addition to the, I don't know if it's legitimately call, called a disorder, but whatever it's psychologically called, besides option paralysis, it's also referred to as the paradox of choice, analysis paralysis, and simply some just some just call it the too many options problem or issue. Um, well, what causes, I'm just going to stick to the phrase option paralysis because that's what I know it by. What causes option paralysis? At the most, at the root of the problem is not simple, but it's the root of the problem is boredom, which can lead to worse things like depression and anxiety or both. And if you suffer from ADHD or ADD, especially ADHD, this may be a problem for you as well. Um, Trauma could cause this to happen. Um, so for example, the COVID lockdown is an example of trauma in Louisiana, especially dealing with hurricanes and other places that deal with that, tornadoes, some natural disasters, that kind of thing, um, could lead to this issue as well. Um, so, and it's to be taken seriously. Now on a interesting note, under the COVID, during the COVID lockdown, I find I found myself extremely bored because I had a lot of time on my hands. I was working at home because we were doing the virtual school at the time for so long, and that you know, and I would I would play sticks is too much time on my hands um, to see if that would help me get through the problem. It didn't. It made it worse. Uh, as, as I was trying to you know cheer myself up, but it didn't. It was counterproductive. So and. If you know Seinfeld at all, there's an episode where um, the character David Putty, who's Elaine's boyfriend on the show for a couple of years, he's just sitting on the couch with this bored look on his face. Um, and he would do that often waiting for the next scene to start. So they, they put that into the show because it was so funny. And my recent video thumbnail is me. I did that on purpose because a friend asked me to do that because we're talking about that episode. He said, hey man, why don't you do a thumbnail for that? It should have been a thumbnail for this episode, not to be funny, but to show the seriousness because it is a serious issue. So in the context of the Seinfeld show, it's very funny 
but outside of the context, it's not funny at all. The uh, option paralysis is a very serious um, thing. And so I, I hope that I can help those of you watching today or hope those who may wait, help those who may watch it down the road. Um, so now the first thing to recognize is that part of the problem or the root of the cause of option paralysis is overthinking. So you may think, well, don't overthink. And you would be right. Um, and to suggest don't overthinking is not meant to be insensitive because overthinking is what you do if you have this problem. It, it's a sticky wicket that you're into because you overthink. However, having said that, what is overthinking, what problems does that cause? It creates loss of willpower and therefore leads to doing nothing, i.e. sitting on the couch and just staring off in the space like David Putty or me or whoever has that problem or just being frustrated, right? Um, so it's serious. Now, having said that, saying don't overthink is not to be insensitive. It is meant to be helpful as well um, because there's a way to possibly prevent yourself from overthinking. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but the first tip is to go with your gut so you don't overthink. Okay, go with your gut. What does your instinct tell you that you want to listen to? What does your mood, what does your mood crave? Another way of saying that, a better way of saying that is, what are you feeling? Now here's the problem. What are you feeling can be answered in two ways. Number one, you have a general sense of what you're feeling that you wanna to listen to, but you can't quite put your finger on it. You definitely wanna to listen to something, but you're not sure. Or you're definitely feeling, say, Black Crows, or if it's not a specific band, it's a genre. But that overthinking, that doubt, do I really want to listen, is, is what's keeping you from putting that Black Crows record on or CD, right? Um, or picking something from the genre that you're feeling. Now, having said that, what if you're not feeling anything and that your boredom or whatever what's causing it is sending you the message, well, I, I should listen to music so at least I'm doing something. That's going to be counterproductive more likely than not. So if you're not feeling anything, then maybe you should do something else. So for example, um, not quite the same thing, but very similar. Uh, when Einstein was stuck on his theory of general relativity, he went and worked in the patent office. So the story goes, and that freed up his brain, the back burners of his brain, so to speak. And, and so he was working on it unconsciously. So that freed up his brain to work on it. And he, he got the work done or the attempt done, his theory done, right? So, and then his book came out, right? So that's one approach. Go with your gut, but be careful. You have to be feeling something. In a general sense, can't quite put your finger on it or specific. All right, now, you can't ignore that rule, which is rule number one. However, if you're going to ignore rule number one, which is go with your gut, then you have to be bold. No dipping your toes in the water here. You jump right in and by be bold, I mean grab anything off the shelf. Anything. Just pick something. Close your eyes. Don't close your eyes. Pick something off the shelf. If you have multiple shelves, then doesn't matter. Greg, go to one of them. Okay. I have three different shelves and other places where I have CDs down here, over here. You know, be instinct, um, be instinctive. Don't think, just do. Okay. Or you can be more adventurous, still being bold. Okay. Go on YouTube, go on Spotify. Hey, Alexa, or whoever you know you have, search for something. You've not heard the new Helms Deep album. Uh, Alexa, would you play Helms Deep? Okay. It's a heavy metal band. It has two former member, members of Raven in it and a singer I've not heard of. It's, it's pretty decent. I like it. It's a great no, but I like it. Um, so there's a tip as well. Now, if we go back a second to rule number one, go with your gut. Okay. Again, you could ignore that and be bold. Okay. Now, 
what if your instinct is not telling you anything, but you definitely know you want to play something. So it's that general, I want to play something, but I can't put my finger on it. Okay. Be bold. Okay. So there's are the options. So you can be, so what I'm trying to say is you can be bold if you want to ignore what your gut tells you, or you can be bold because you don't have a specific point your finger. Definitely. I want to listen to this. But you're not sure if you want to listen to it because you're doubt you that self-doubt, that overthinking, right? So you can be bold again on two occasions. You're ignoring going with your gut, or your gut's not specific enough. And okay, so be bold is another option. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Now. So when it's when we talk about being bold, um, you can go with something you've not heard in a while. Okay, that's, that's another option in the be bold tip. Um, here's an example for me. Um, the other day I was finding myself, again, gee, I got lots to listen to. What, what should I listen to? And then I thought, well, I haven't heard Janis Joplin's I Got Them Old Cosmic Blues CD in a while. So I put that on and I loved it. Every minute of it. I just planted myself on the couch, got the headphones out. Plugged in my computer because I have it on MP3 format only. I was like, wow, this is great. I haven't played this in a couple of years. I love this album. It's one of, um, I think it is her best. Anyway, I think it's her magnum, magnum opus. All right, here's some other tips. Have a plan. Write out, seriously, write out what do you want to listen to for your music free time. You have some time free up? You have some time uh, freed up? Make a plan. You make a grocery list for groceries, don't you? Most of you do that. Um, have a plan. Get a notepad, get a notebook, or go on your phone. You have the notepad app, use that. I, I do both. Um, and give yourself a deadline. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're off Saturday, or you come home from work and you have to do some laundry and that's it, maybe feed the cat. Um, Where's my little guy? He's over there somewhere, probably in the bedroom. Um, but you're free. So give your set of, give your, oh, I have to cook and I'm going to cook around six. So I'll be free around seven to nine. I'm not going to bed till 10. We'll make a deadline. I am going to put some music on. Here's what it is by this time, 730. And I'll listen to that till 830 or 10. Give yourself, you know, put it down. That may help. Um, here's an easy one. Or what I mean, not easy. Here's kind of a commonsensical thing when it comes to helping you deal with option paralysis. What do you think about what is your main objective? Do you want to dance? You want to get up and move, right? Something that makes you move. It could maybe it's not this. You still want to get up and move. You're gonna to listen to thrash metal. You want to rattle your head, right? The old Megadeth thing, right? Um, you want to do the Judas Priest move, right? You want to listen to Judas Priest and you want to, right? You want to do that move that Glenn Tipton and K.K. Downing had kind of trademarked, right? That accepted, that kind of thing, trademarked, you know, figuratively speaking. Um, or do you want to plant yourself and just take it all in like you would with classical music or prog rock, right? Um, you want to have fun, right? Um, or is your main objective you're seeking inspiration because you want to listen to something that's going to inspire you to pick up your, in my case, my bass guitar. If you're a trumpet player, you're going to probably listen to some jazz, right? Or something where there's trumpet music. It could be a big band, right? And you want to listen to, say, Miles Davis so that you can pick up your trumpet later and practice sounding like him, right? Or you want to write lyrics. I'm going to listen to Rush or Yes and look at the lyrics and that will inspire me to write my own poetry. I write poetry. Some of it's inspired from the music I listen to. Some sometimes it's movie TV. Sometimes it's just the old muse. Um, or do you want to do both? The, the instrument and the lyrics. All right. Here's another um, tip. And I'm pulling up my computer here, my, my playlist. Create a playlist. Create a new playlist. Because sometimes your old playlist can get, you know, stiff or old, that kind of thing. Um, here's an example. I often will create a playlist um, that is a theme. So the one I pulled up is called Addiction. So here's, and, and it's long, it's 
four hours and 22 minutes. Um, do I listen to the whole thing at once? No, but you, I, I've done that a couple times. I had some free time, a lot of free time. Um, so here's, um, here's some examples. The songs in the playlist called Addiction. Heroin by Velvet Underground. No P Blues by Grinderman. Snowblind by Sleep. Take Your Whiskey Home, Van Halen. Poison Whiskey and That Smell by Leonard Skinner. Heartbreaker by the Rolling Stones. Cold Gin by Kiss. Happiness is a Warm Gun by The Beatles. The Green Man Alishi with a Two-Prong Crown, Fleetwood Mac. That's not a drug or alcohol. Well, that's a drug too. This is about something else. Listen to the lyrics, read the lyrics. Sweet Leaf, What Do You Do For Money, Honey? So if you want blood, you've got it. Addiction to bloodshed maybe or violence. So some of these are a little stressed. You got Trashed by Black Sabbath, Bleed the Freak by Alice in Change, Just What I Need by The Cars. So create a playlist. If you don't want to do a theme, then create your own greatest hits. So for Rush, I have like four different greatest hits playlists that I've made. Um, and then I have even more by them where I take a period of their career and make that a playlist. So I have a, a playlist from the debut through and including um, Moving Pictures, their prog era, right? Um, and then I have a playlist for their post Terry Brown stuff, or rather post Moving Pictures signals, because that was Terry Brown through and including um, a show of hands, but not including that album, uh, the album before that. And then I have a playlist for the back third or fourth of their catalog. Um, so be creative with your playlists. Um, now, next, here's a tip, limit your spending. So if we talk about books, for example, I've gotten to the point where I have to stop buying books where I want this, I want that, and they just sit over there. And I've done this with music too but well, I'll get to music, but it, it's tied to music. So when it comes to books, I buy one book at a time and you know what I do? I read that book. Then I buy a new book if I want a new book because if I just buy more than one book or I'm tempted to go in Barnes and Noble to get a coffee or just sit down and read or work or, or work on that channel here or whatever, I'll, I see a book that I like, but it's just gonna sit there until I finish the one I'm already reading. So it's, it's, it's kind of, I, I bought a Nine Inch, remember when Nine Inch Nails put out the CD on Ghosts I bought it and I didn't listen to it for four, till four months later. So that that's, for me personally, that had to stop. So that that's what I mean. So that's the connection to music. Um, so limit your spending. Instead, go on YouTube, go to Alexa or something similar to Alexa, Spotify, etc., and listen to music that way for your ideas, for your music free time. It's because if you limit your spending, you're not buying, say, 10 CDs at a pop or eight CDs or four or five, and then you're like, well, which one of these I'm gonna listen to first, right? If you're like me, are you gonna listen to these right away? There's the kicker. If you buy just one CD, here's another tip. Listen to that CD as soon as you can. So there's this Miles Davis slash Coltrane CD I saw the other day in Barnes & Noble, it's like $7.99. I'm probably gonna get it tomorrow since tomorrow's payday. I'm gonna buy it, if I do buy it, and guess what, I'm gonna take it home and listen to it right away. Because I don't want that Nine Inch Nails thing with Ghost to happen all over again. And I still do, do that from some time. I got three CDs for my birthday uh, not too long ago, and they're all jazz CDs, and I've heard them before, and they're wonderful, but I have not opened them up yet. I gotta open them up and listen to them. I want to, what's keeping me from doing that? Again, option paralysis. So. I'm not saying in any way and shape or form in this video that this is going to solve your problem. Again, these are tips and I hope that they help. Um, so again, if you make a new purchase, listen to it as soon as you can. Otherwise, it's just going to sit on the shelf. Okay? All right. Now, here's some other tips. And this is going to seem, seem weird, but if you're familiar with the graphic novel, Arkham Asylum, where Batman goes into Arkham Asylum and he has to deal with the Joker and then he meets some of his old foes like the Scarecrow, some of my favorite Batman graphic novels of all time. Um, Batman helps Two-Face. He takes his coin away from him and gives him 52 cards. Or the Doctor does that. I think it's Batman, though. And because, let's face it, Two-Face knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne. 
And so here's what you do. You, you don't get a deck of cards, but you get 52 note cards. You buy a pack of note cards and you write the genres, the subgenres, the specific albums, the bands and the artists, or a combination of these. And then you pick, and you shuffle them, and then you pick which one you want, and then you play that as a tip. Um, now here's probably what you're asking. What if you put something on and you're like, nope, not feeling it. Well, pause. Don't take it off yet. I suggest don't take it off at all. Um, if you're going to take it off, get through that least at one song. Or if it's an album at one side, even better. Um, listen to at least at one song. Here's why. And this seems off the cuff or not related, but it is. There's, I forget which Star Trek The Next Generation movie it is, where Data gets... Yeah, Data gets a, because he wants to be more human, right? Each episode or many episodes we see that. I'm laughing because I'm thinking of where he gets the gray hair piece in the side and the woman tells him, you look like a bloody skunk, right? But in the movie, that was an episode on TV, but in one of the movies, he gets a program that he downloads into his consciousness that gives him emotions. And he's, he's, he's crying, not crying literally, but, but pleading with Picard, get it out, take it off, unplug it. And Picard says, no, 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 you have to work through this. You have to work through this. Um, in a similar vein, not quite the same, but I remember reading an, an interview with, um, oh God, I forget his name. He was a quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams. And... They made a movie about him recently, anyway, and he wasn't doing well. So they took him out and they put him, this was back when he had The Greatest Show on Turf. And I can't think of his name, sorry about that. But anyway, so they took him out for a bunch of games and they put his backup in, and then the backup was not doing so well. And coach is like, we're gonna put you back in. And he's like, no, 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 you gotta let him work through this. So think of it that way, you gotta work through it. now. If, if you can't take it, you're like, I'm just not feeling it, then take it off, but try, okay? You, you kind of want to work through that, at least one song, okay? So if after one song, then pick something new. Again, go to YouTube, go to Spotify. Hey, Alexa, would you play, right? Um, or phone a friend, phone a friend, or text, say, hey, give me something new to listen to, or what are you listening to right now, even if it's old, and take their advice. Okay, now, if all else fails, then go back to what your gut tells you, if you've not followed your gut. Now, remember, gut is instinct. There's a car outside, sorry about that. Um, now, what if you're not sure? You weren't feeling something, your gut doesn't tell you anything, or you're not sure if you should follow your gut again, overthinking, or something else, then wait five, ten minutes. It's kind of like when your teacher tells you don't turn in your paper right away, um, before the deadline, of course. You've written your paper, don't proofread it, and relook at it right away. Stick it in the drawer, or put it somewhere, and come back to it tomorrow, or a day, or a couple days later, and then look at it. Well, here, you don't want to wait that long. Wait five, 10 minutes, okay? No longer, and then try one of these tips that I've already shared with you. So let's review these tips, okay? So go with your gut if you can, whether it's very specific or can't quite put your finger on it. Okay, again, you wanna be in the mood though to listen to something. If it's just you wanna do it to do it, then you're being counterproductive and maybe you should be doing something else like a load of laundry or cleaning the house, or playing with the cat, or the dog, or go for a walk, or whatever it is, some other hobby, right? Um, or be bold, as I said, jump in feet first with something new, or something old that you haven't listened to in a while, okay? Make a plan, write it out, okay? Set yourself a deadline. Think about your main objective, or objectives, I went over the, what those are. Create a playlist, okay? Limit your spending, okay? If you buy something new, okay, don't buy a whole bunch of stuff, baby. Just buy one thing and listen to that as soon as you can, okay? Do the 52 deck trick, your note cards, try that. Um, and finally, if you put something on and you're still like, nope, then go back to YouTube, Spotify, Alexa, phone a friend, okay? And if all else fails, 
go back to your gut. And if that still doesn't work, then wait five, 10 minutes and then try again and go through all these tips if that helps. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you find this helpful. If you can come up with, if you think I've missed something, um, post in the comments below. Have a blessed Valentine's Day. Take care now. Blessed Ash Wednesday as well. Bye now.